And so if you please be so kind as to take your seats, we're going to learn a little bit about the autopilot problem. And this will be by Sergeant Major Manager Amanda Drager um, from the Army Cyber Institute. So if you'd like to wander around, here's the microphone. If not, you can hold on to the side for dear life. Good afternoon. So one of the themes of this conference is learning from our past. And I am a fan of learning not only from our own past, but from the past of other fields. And so that's why I'm going to talk a little bit about aviation and some of the things we can apply to the cyberspace domain. Next slide, please. So in this case, I'm going to talk focusing on one particular airline disaster in specific. That is a 2009 Air France 447. This one is a really famous disaster because a whole bunch of stuff went wrong. Not only were there mechanical failures that caused the autopilot to disengage, but it was really famous for the pilots kind of fighting with each other. Both the pilot flying and pilot non-flying were trying to fly the plane, and they weren't communicating with each other. But there are a bunch of other things that went wrong as well. One of them is that when the autopilot disengaged, not just the autopilot disengaged, but a whole bunch of other safety systems disengaged as well. One of those systems is the one that prevents stall. Now, I'm not an aviation specialist, but I seem to remember something about stall from high school physics. You know, you put the nose too high up, and then you lose lift, and then you end up in a nosedive. Well, that is precisely what happened. The pilots pulled the nose up too far. The plane didn't try to stop it because that system was disengaged. The plane goes into a nosedive, crashes into the middle of the Atlantic, there are no survivors. So what can we learn from this incident? Well, you can learn some really interesting things by digging into the multiple hundreds of pages of multiple reports that the investigating agency put out. Next slide, please. And the first of these that I'm gonna focus on is the idea that there's more than one law. What the heck are you talking about? Well, this particular aircraft has different modes. Normal law, alternate law being kind of your main one, your main ones. In normal law, everything is operating normally, shock. Uh, but when some things fail, then it can bounce into a mode that Airbus calls alter alternate law. What that means is, as mentioned before, not just the autopilot disengaged, but a whole bunch of other systems disengaged as well. And the indicators to the pilot for what law they're in are along the top of that screen. So if you're looking on the left-hand side, normal law, you're gonna see four little green indicators. But you look at the other screens, those little green indicators have now turned amber. So that tells the pilot that autopilot is no longer happening. Okay, so the pilots correctly took over flying the airplane at that point, but they didn't do a good job of that. And so the really key things here are that, you know, autopilot isn't a singular thing. It is what, you know, us in the cybersecurity field would refer to as a technology stack. There's the autopilot itself. There's the systems that prevent stall. There's the systems that keep it from, you know, rolling too far. There's sorts of different things. And the really key part here is that the pilots did not have the tool specific training, the particular certification on exactly how these systems failed. So that meant that they didn't actually know that when autopilot disengaged, all those other systems disengaged as well. So the key lesson we can learn from this next slide is that Training matters. And it sounds pithy, but it is true. You absolutely do need to specific training. You absolutely need to understand all of those tiny little details of the tools that you use every day. And in particular, you need to understand how those tools fail. Do they fail open? Do they fail closed? Do they take anything else down when they fail? What other things are riding on that tool? All of that is a training problem, but not everything is a training problem. Next slide. One of the other things that was really interesting in that report was how they talked about 
how an understanding of the fundamental principles of flight could have prevented this entire situation. So again, my high school knowledge of airplanes is that, you know, there's this whole Bernoulli's principle thing, which if you talk to the right person, they'll explain that's not what's really going on. But the important thing is that, you know, how that wing is positioned matters. It is possible to tip that nose back so far that you no longer have lift and you send the plane into a nose dive. Again, I'm not a pilot, but I understand this. And that sort of fundamental understanding could have made a difference here because whether or not the pilots knew about that whole system preventing stall being disengaged, they could have like looked out a window, understanding they were driving through some sketchy weather. So, you know, not entirely feasible, but they could have looked out a window and gone, hmm, we're kind of tilted back really far. There's this thing that happens when your nose is extremely far off, it's not good. Let's maybe go back down a little bit, try to fly a little bit more level. But they didn't do that. And yes, there are a whole bunch of other reasons why this happened, but that is absolutely one of the keys to this incident. So what can we learn from that? Next slide. While training is in fact important, so is understanding the fundamentals of your craft. So is understanding the fundamentals of your field, whatever that field is. So that is to say, education is also important. If I don't know all of those details on a tool, if I have education, if I have an understanding of the fundamentals, I can compensate for that. I can figure out ways to get around to the fact that I don't know precisely what my tool is doing, but I know enough to know kind of sort of what right looks like. And so coupled with that is experience is really important as well. I need to actually have the opportunity to do the things, to experience for myself what right looks like, to build that into my own muscle memory in order to experience some edge cases, whether it is in the real world or in simulators and simulations, to understand all of these ways that my systems fail and to get a chance to overcome that. So that when disaster happens, I just know what to do because I've already done it a whole bunch of times. Next slide, please. And this gets to the key of what I call the autopilot problem. And that's this, automation is cool. Automation does a lot of really good things for us. Autopilot is a really useful tool because it reduces the cognitive load of the pilots. If you had to actually manually fly an aircraft across the Atlantic Ocean, you are going to be completely smoked at the end of that flight, which is going to make landing that aircraft rather difficult. Even though it's not a physically demanding job, your brain is just going to be turned into a pile of goo because you're having to focus every moment of that flight. But things like autopilot mean you can dial it back a little bit, reduce the cognitive load so that the pilots, you know, when something happens, they're a lot fresher. They can actually do something about it. And it also allows us to apply expertise at scale in a way that you otherwise can't. Automation allows us to extremely uniformly apply routine tasks. It allows us to do the core routine stuff that can be reduced to a mechanical process consistently in a way that I cannot do if a human is performing that task. So it's awesome. However, comma, it introduces an entire new class of problems. When I am doing every single task manually, I know how to do every single task manually. And every person on my team knows how to do every single task manually. When I automate some of that away, then I end up with a bunch of people who don't actually know how to do those tasks. When that automation fails, they have nothing to fall back on. They don't have the ability to, you know, kind of overcome that. They don't necessarily have the ability to rebuild that, to see how that script was written, understand what it's trying to do, do it manually in the stop gap, and to fix it so that the automation can pick back up. 
if all you ever do is those automated processes and you never practice doing them manually, you're going to have a bad day. If you don't actually exercise those automations failing, you are going to have a really bad day. And that's really the fundamental question here. How do you know when your computer's giving you a wrong answer? Usually it's because you've done that a bunch of times. You know what right looks like. And that's one of the things that we're seeing with a lot of these so-called AI tools, your chat GPT, your large language models. When it comes to general knowledge, when you ask them a question, they can do pretty okay. And you might be able to verify whether or not it's right or wrong. But when it comes to niche knowledge, they fall down and they fall down hard, but they're confident about it. So unless you are already a domain expert, how do you know it's wrong when all of that knowledge is locked behind paywalled journals? How do you verify that if you're not already an expert in that field? And so I need to maintain expertise in our fields. I need to ensure that all of our people have those foundational, those formative experiences of both training and education coupled with experience in order to develop them into much better operators. Next slide. And so that is my concept of a formula for success. I need all three of those things. I need to understand that edge cases can be really sharp. And that's something that automations are extremely bad at. You look at self-driving cars in construction zones. It's not a good time. Construction zones are those edge cases. And they don't do a good job at that. But a human can handle them extremely well. But only if we're used to driving most of the time. If I never drive, then I'm not going to do a good job with construction. And all these skills are use it or lose it. Pilots have the requirement to do a certain amount of simulation hours, to exercise all of those weird edge cases, how airplanes crash. That is part of their currency, their certification, and they have to do it on these specific airframes. So it's training. It is you know, very specific about what they have to do. Next slide, please. I do want to give one quick shout out to the concept of psychological safety. Now, usually you hear this in conjunction with teams, how people interact with each other. Because it is, in fact, important that you know, people feel safe enough at work to be able to bring up when something's wrong with one of their coworkers. How many of your people feel safe enough to bring up when something is wrong with some of your software? Especially talking about like government software, like we're all just kind of used to it all being broke all the time. So, you know, how do you instill that culture where like, yes, mentioning it's broken is totally okay. Because if I don't know it's broken, I can't fix it. And you don't know it's broken if you don't already know what right looks like. Next slide. And so that is really the key message here that the bottom line is that talent development, workforce development is a hard problem. There's a whole lot that goes into growing a person into a competence, whatever they are, whether they're an analyst, developer, operator, whatever it is, it takes a whole lot of work. It takes that combination of training, of education, of experience in a broad range of situations in order to grow them into the best that they can be. Now, this was the extremely short version of the talk. You can read a bunch more about some other airline crashes as well at the link on the side slide, or if you manage to grab one of the hard copies of the Cyber Magazine, it is also in there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Amanda. Appreciate it very much.